Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. I've been looking forward to this puzzle for a while. Look at the images here. A few glasses of bubbly by Half-Baked Lunatic. And the, the great thing about Half-Baked Lunatic is if you like his puzzles, um, he's been sending in a lot for our apps. And that's brilliant because if you like his puzzles, you're just like me. I think they're great. And i um, really looking forward to having a go at this one, but also the fact that, that both Line app, which already features some and will feature more by Half-Baked Lunatic, and the forthcoming apps will include several of his puzzles. He's a very interesting constructor, and look at the image on this. I mean, you cannot say it's anything but pretty much perfect. Um, I will go through the rules in a minute. Again, if you know our normal line colours and uh, rule types, if they won't come as any surprise, but it's a great image. Anyway, um, that's the apps. Check them out on the links under the video, along with Sven Stokupad and our merchandise, which is going very well at the moment. I'm delighted to say lots of people must be out there wearing their, their Bobbins logo or CTC logo gear, which is fabulous. Um, I will be wearing my own hoodie later today. But um, that's all there. And of course, the way to find Patreon is to go there. So, um, and if you join us on Patreon, then there's loads of extra content. Me doing crosswords, Simon doing difficult Sudoku solves, um, solutions to our monthly rewards, and of course the monthly rewards themselves, which come out on the first of the month normally. And you can enter the competition until the 20th, but the rewards stay there, so always available. Do join us on Patreon, we love it when people do that. Do leave comments on the puzzles, we're very happy when people do that. Um, especially when they're praised for the constructors who create things like this. Okay, let's go through the rules now. Normal Sudoku rules apply, so we're going to put one to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Digits along a green champagne flute, so neighbouring digits along the green line must differ by at least five. Neighbouring digits on the orange line must differ by at least four, so those two could be one and five, but couldn't be two and five. And those lines are normally called German whispers and Dutch whispers. Digits uh, box borders divide the blue champagne flute into segments with the same sum. So that group of cells is the same as this group of cells, as a total I'm talking about. Same as that, same as that. So there's two lots of that sum in box two. The purple base of the glasses must be a consecutive set of digits in any order. Um, so this could be 1, 3 and 2, or 6, 8 and 7, say. And then cells separated by a champagne bubble, i.e. a white dot, must contain consecutive digits. And the quad circles show the digits in the four cells surrounding. So these four digits in these cells are 1, 3, 7 and 8 in some order. Give it a try. I'm looking forward to it. Let's get cracking. So... Right, I mean, there are, there are plenty of things to think about here. One of them that I have just thought about is these, these purple, the, the pink or purple Renban lines. Um, since they're all in the same row, there's a one in the row somewhere, knowledge bomb, and that must be with two and three. The nine must be with eight and seven. So these will divide into a, a one, two, three, a four, five, six, and a seven, eight, nine. Now, we've got a 2-2 two, two around this um, quadruple. So one of these is a 2. Therefore, one of these is the 1-2-3 sum. The other one is the 4-5-6 sum, because the digits here are from 2, 5, and 6. So this is the 7-8-9 sum over here. Um... That is obviously 7 or 8, not 9. Now, the orange line is much less helpful than the green, but it may... Ah, oh, no. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> Lots of noises off. Um, I was wondering whether this could be a high digit. Because it comes from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The only possible high digit it could be is 6. But that would actually work. Six, one, 
seven or eight. Okay, I'm going to mark this one up as one, two, eight, nine. Otherwise, it's low, and that gives us a start on the line. We can always tell that alternating digits on a green line are one polarity, high or low, and the other alternating digits are the other. But we can't tell which is which initially sometimes. So that, I know, is quite extreme because it has three neighbors in the same box. Um, I'm very irritated that I don't know whether this is a six. If this is a six, we would have a lot of digits down here. We would know that was a six, five, four, two, one, three. I mean, that would be really quite powerful. Ah, no, I was going to say this can't be the one, two, three, because that can't be low enough, but it can. It can be three there. Three, one, two, five, no, not necessarily. Okay, I don't know. I thought I thought we could get through there, but we can't. Now, another thing I was thinking about was five digits here, adding to the same as three digits there and there, and also here. Ah, no, okay, five in this column. It can't be next to this white dot, which I've just pencil marked. It can't be on the green line. So five is up here somewhere. Now, these four purples are all the same polarity. So five must be with two digits of the same polarity here, which are both green in our nomenclature system. So that is the last purple cell in the column. And that's extraordinarily unsurprising, being on the dot with an extreme digit. That doesn't really do anything. Hmm, okay, I don't really know where to go for answers anymore. The Dutch whisper line is less helpful. This, you can go high-low on it, but when you meet a five, that can switch the polarity as you go up or down the line. So this one is high, and that one is low, but could be a five. This is one, three, four, or five. I'm not putting in two, because I know there's two twos around here. Um, but, I mean, that's not... I can't keep going with polarity up that line, so that doesn't seem to be where to attack it. And honestly, I'm struggling a bit for knowing where to attack this. Oh, this can't be seven or eight, and it's in this dot region. So that is three or four. So if it's four, this is a five, six pair. If it's three, this is a one, two pair. If it's three, that has to be a one. Now the maximum you could get here on the blue line would then be 18. The minimum for these, oh, it's not five cells, it's four cells. Oh, the minimum is not very exciting. Oh, rats. Okay, is this parity or something in a row like that where... Hmm. Yeah, I mean, now I'm wondering where five is here. If five isn't in those cells, then these are all the same. No, but five could be in those. It's... Five really is a mess on an, on an orange line. That's the trouble. Okay, these are all the same. No, they're not. They're just different parities from these cells. One, three, seven, eight, sit around this one. How do I use that? Gosh, I don't know. Um, oh, well, five doesn't. So five in this box is over here. So five in box nine is down the left of it. Five isn't here because of the quadruple. These numbers can only be from one, three, seven, eight. These are from either one, two, three, or seven, eight, nine. 
So four, five, and six all have to find homes in these cells. This one can't be any of those, this one here, because its neighbours see each other, and therefore it can't have a monogamous digit like four and six, which can only have one possible neighbour. So four, five, and six have to sit in these cells. One of these is that monogamous digit and is sitting with its two neighbours having to be nines or ones. So this digit is now nine or one. That one is two or eight. One of these is four or six, and the others from four, five, and six have to go into these two cells. Now, is it a four or is it a six? Whichever it is, the extreme digit goes here, one or nine, If that was 4, 5, 6, then this couldn't be 4, 5, 6, because there'd be a triple looking straight at it. That's quite interesting. But that's two if statements, which aren't a good number. Um, right, these digits are fairly extreme. OK, where are 4, 5, and 6 in this column? Now, one of them can be here but none of them can be in these cells because of the seeing two neighbours rules. So we kind of maybe knew that five and the green version of four or six is sitting up here, but the one sitting up here cannot be all of four, five, six because the two, two are green, they're in the same polarity and the other digit is a five. So, two of four, five, six can sit there, but not three. And the third does sit here, and this is four or six. And this triple is four, five, six. I'm not going to rule on which is which, but this cell is not a two. And I get my first digits in the grid, because I can put the twos in around that quadruple. This becomes a three. That's a one. These are from four, seven, eight, obviously. Um... Right, that's an extreme digit, so this isn't... Sorry, that's a monogamous digit, so this is an extreme digit. Five is not here anymore. Five had to... Five couldn't be there, could it? So five is here, and that's a six. Don't know if that's going to help. Um, now, this can no longer be the extreme digit because we have the four, five, six triple. Sorry, the monogamous digit. So this is the monogamous digit, four or six. That is the extreme digit 1 or 9, same as that. Four, five, six. Hmm, okay, this is... These are both from 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9. Well, they're not 1, 9 anymore, so they're from 2, 3, 7, 8 as a group. That one's not 2. And then up here, we've got one digit from 2, 3, 7, 8, 5, and either 4 or 6, which I'm tempted to assume are on that white dot. Although they don't have to be, actually. 5 can't be here, because that digit would be an extreme digit. Sorry, a monogamous digit, and that is not a position where a monogamous digit can go. So if 5 was here, that might be 6 and that's 7. That would become the 1, 2 pair. And that's impossible. Right. So 5 can't be here. Because this would be the monogamous digit, be it 6 or 4. That would be the next digit in the sequence, be it 3 or 7. And these would be the most extreme possible digits but in purple. But one of them is sitting over here. So that's not possible. So that's not 5. This is where 5 goes. This is the monogamous purple digit up here. This is the extreme green digit up here. These cells are 3, 7 and 8 in some order in this column. Uh, which really does suit. Now there's a 1 in one of those two now. I haven't considered the blue line much since I discovered that this Y shape was only four cells. 
<laughs> not five. Oh, that one puts a one over here somewhere, and that's an X-wing on ones, which is very pretty, and puts the one in row four there, and that sorts out all the polarity. Isn't that lovely? Seven there, six there. So purple has become high. We can actually convert purple to orange, and green to blue for low, and Bob's your uncle. Uh, that's a four, that's a nine, that's a six. This is a seven, eight pair. That can't be three now, because it would be touching a seven. So that's two, three, four, and this is all coming together. Like peaches and cream, that's got to be a two. Those don't have a four in, and now they don't have a corner mark. This is three and nine. Those don't have an eight in. That is eight instead in the column. These are now a one eight pair. Right, well, we've got a lot done on the green champagne flute, hurrah. That one is drained, basically. Now, we need to move over. I don't know whether to blue or orange. Maybe to orange. This is an interesting digit, because that's one, three, four, or five. If this was low, it would have to be one. If it's high, I suppose it can be six or nine. Maybe it's not that interesting. Gosh, I mean, so much done over here. It was so, it was very exciting. Right, this row, we've lost one, two, and three out of it. Four, five, six. This digit is going to be the same parity as that one. Totally uninteresting fact. Um, ah, bother. Okay, now let's go back to thinking about the maximum for this. It's 18. The minimum for this is now 2, 3, 4, 5, which adds up to 14. So we're looking at an N total somewhere between 14 and 18. Oh, 8, 7 are a pair in those cells. That's huge. I didn't see that at all. Um, and that is therefore a 4. And that is now not a 4 or a 1. Ooh, that's getting narrowed down. This can't be a nine over here, so that's part of a three, five pair. That's nine, that's three. This is a one, two, six triple. That's four, five, nine as a triple. Okay, so 18 is still possible there. Hmm, yeah, there's a lot of possibilities between 14 and 18. Okay, here, what's going on? Right, three and five, neither of them can sit next to two. If that's a three, this is a six. If that's a five, this is a one. Oh, come on, do a bit more. There's a one in one of those cells, so that's not a one. In fact, this quadruple, one, five, six, nine, is that doing something? No, I'll tell you what, this needs an even digit on, this white dot, and it can't like, use the 8 or the 6 or the 2, so it needs a 4, and that's there. This is 3 or 5. That's not a 4 now. 4, 1, 8, 6, 2, 3, 5, 7, 9. We've only got odds left to put in the column. So, now, what does this blue segment add up to? Well, we know it's parity, at least. It's somewhere between 12 and 18, and it's even. But from this, I thought we learnt, and this, we learnt we were somewhere between 14 and 18. So the blue total is 14, 16, or 18. It's not 18. Because if you added up those two, 36, and you used the incredible secret that I'm about to share with you, that every box in a Sudoku adds up to the same number and it's always 45, because that's the sum of 1 to 9. If those were both 18s, that would be 36, that would be 9. 
but it can't be 9 because there's a 1 used up there and you can't put 2, 3, 4 here because of that. In fact, this row now, 1, 2, 3, 4 are used up. This is going to have to be even because we've only got one even left there and one even left over here. So that's six or eight. These are from five, seven, nine, definitely include a seven. Um, and this is either a nine, eight pair or a five, six pair. One of these two pairs is a 1-2 pair, which has to have one on that side because of the one we've placed at the bottom and two on the other side. So. <laughs> so what's the next step? I mean, things are coming now, but I don't know quite what to focus on next. If that was five, six, seven, this would be a nine, eight pair. That's quite plausible because we must need a high digit on this line to go with the one. Hmm. Can I work out this blue line at this stage? I just can't tell. Now, if if ah oh, five. Oh, if 5 was in one of these cells, on the, on the orange line, it would have to have 1 below it and 9 above. 9, 5, 1, 6, 7. You'd have to put 4, 3 up there on the white dot and 2, 8 down here. It looks like that can work. I thought I was going to rule it out. And that's 5 being on the line. Otherwise, it's 7 and 9 on the line. Then these would have to be from one, two, three, four, five. Ah, the other digit out of six and eight can't sit in any of those cells by the orange line rules. That's very neat. Because six or eight can't sit next to any of five, seven, or nine. I, there's no way you can make that work. So six and eight are both in these trio, and that rules on what this cell is. That's a one. That's now 5, and that's now 9. That's intriguing. What a surprising development. 1, 5, 9, 6, 8. So these are from 2, 3, 4, 7. 7 can't be on the white dot with anything else there. In fact, I think it's got to be here, because this can't be 2, 3, or 4 by the Dutch Whisper rules. That's 7. This can't be 4 now. Ah, oh, that's fascinating. Right, these digits are high-ish digits from 6, 7, 8, 9, that can't be 8. So they're from 6, 7, 9. These are unsurprisingly lowish digits, but we have to include 5 amongst possible lows here. However, that's 4 of the, low, of the lowest 5 digits, and that means 1, 2 can't go here. Must go at the top of the blue flute. So we're using blue and orange very much together, clinking glasses, as it were. Um, and again, we've used four of the very low digits. So this has to come from five, six, seven, eight, this white dot pair. Can that be nine? I need to be thinking about the blue lines again, don't I? But I didn't get very far with that. Now, we knew they were going to be an even total. Does that help here? No. If that's odd... That's even. These are different parity. If that's 7, that is 4. And then we're only adding up to 12. And that would have to be 3, 4, 5. And this couldn't work anymore then, given everything else we've put in the box. If that was 3, 4, 5, the minimum digits here would be... 1, 6, 7, which add up to more than 12. So 12 is not the total, so that is not odd. That is even. This is odd, and it's not 4. So 4 goes there. The total for the line is either 
18 or 14, and there's probably one of those that works well and one that doesn't. 14 would need that to be 3, 4, 7. And these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7 would gone. These would have to be a 5, 8 pair. That works quite neatly, actually. Oh, look, that's seven. Take seven out of those two cells. That works on the quadruple. We get six, nine there, one, five on this side. Ah, you can't be looking at everything all the time. Don't worry. Um, right, one, five, four. That can't be a four either. Now, how's the Dutch Whisper doing? That could still be a six with twos in both places. In fact, one of those is a six, so that has to be a two. That's a nice thought. That's a three. Up here now we have four, six, eight, and the central one can't be four. Actually, neither of those two can be four, so four's at the top. Touching three, I think we're going to get a finish here. That becomes two. This one is now not two, three, or four. Um, oh, silly Dutch whisper, not telling me what you're doing. This top row, that is seven, eight, or nine. So this now can't be seven or nine. That must be five. Touching a nine, touching a one. Five, six, seven, that's an eight. Box one is finished. This is the eight, nine pair. That's probably been available in some form for a little while. Seven there. This can't have seven or eight, so it's a five, six pair. And now we know the total of the blue flute is 14. So that's a five, that seems to work. 14 needs a nine there, a five there, I mean. Three, four, seven, that has to be a seven by white dot rules. Um, so we've got seven and we need another seven here for the blue flute rule, so that is not, that has to be five and that has to be two and that works very well, okay. So the blue flute is satisfied. The orange flute is, I think, satisfied. Actually, we can do those by Sudoku. We didn't need the orange rules for those. And then probably everything else is going to just come out of this puzzle by Sudoku. Oh, no, I've got all these pairs left in these central rows. What's going to sort them out? Oh, well, the digits we've already placed. Come on, Mark. Six, nine, five, six, one, five, eight, one. I mean, you do get this analysis paralysis sometimes where you're desperately looking for special rules when obviously Sudoku will do it. Seven, three, and then I finish with eight, seven, and that is the solution. What a beautiful puzzle. I mean, classic half bait lunacy, glorious stuff. A few glasses of bubbly, thoroughly enjoyed this end. Cheers to you and hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.